Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, Anis. We are live. Sure. Would you like to start or should I start? You can start. Great. Give me the cue, please. Uh, this is the queue. Sorry, you can begin. We are already live. Great, great. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Dear members, on behalf of the Indo Belgian Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I welcome you to this important webinar on impact of COVID 19 on cybersecurity and data protection. This is the first of several webinars that we've planned in this new reality where most of you, in fact, if not all, are really working from home if you're not part of the essential services of the country. And this is actually a, a defining factor as far as uh, the way we work and interact with our members go. It is with extreme pleasure that I announce that we have Krish Bhatt, who is the Chief Information Security Advisor for SKP Business Consulting. I will shortly give a background to Krish, but before that, just a couple of words on the situation that we are in. Firstly, let me start by asking, I hope you and your family and colleagues are safe and healthy. It is very important that we work together to make sure that business continues and we also support and aid the government in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic and we unite in a spirit of strength. I do wish that we come out stronger ever than we've been before. Now, on this webcast, we're going to discuss one of the very basic items that all of us are faced with, which is working from home. Most of us log in through our computers, iPad, or iPhone, and we try and make sure that business continues as usual. But there are, of course, certain risks associated with that. To discuss these risks and some of the salient features around this, as I mentioned, Chris, uh, Chris has joined us. Let me start by giving a background to Chris. Krish uh, has extensive experience working across sectors. Uh, he's a certified information systems auditor and a certified information system security professional. Krish uh, specializes in technology risk consulting, ERP implementation, and he has also moderated trainings related on technology. Krish, as an advisor, has handled several engagements. He also conducts training programs for students pursuing certification both in India and abroad. So without much ado, uh, let me hand the mic over to Krish, and I'll request Krish to take us through his presentation. Krish, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. A big thanks to Indo-Belgium Chamber of Commerce for having organized this webinar and providing next time an opportunity to uh, speak about cybersecurity and data protection. These are amazing times that all of us are going through. Not a single bullet is fired, yet we are all under a state of lockdown. It's like a world war, but the war is with an unknown enemy. And unfortunately, it's a virus, but it's not a computer virus. Being mindful of that, it was a very short notice for organizations to plan for the biggest human exodus known in history, where people were forced to work from home in a state of lockdown in an extremely short period of time. A lot of areas were never tested for. A BCM scenario, keeping in mind such an action, was never visualized. Further, disruption away from office for extended or longer periods of time was never part of the BCM strategy of any organization worldwide. This sudden impact has created a lot of exposure and vulnerabilities from a cybersecurity and data protection perspective. It has been extremely troublesome for business leaders 
IT infra management team, as well as employees, each one grappling with the problems of this sudden change in environment at such short notice. Without dwelling into the larger issue and bringing the focus back to cybersecurity and data protection, let me first take you through the radar. So radar is nothing but risk, assumptions, issues, dependencies, action and repairs. The risk that we face today is limited controls on assets operating on work from home, limited access to risk and support teams to monitor. So at one end, office assets, organization assets are outside at distributed endpoints, at disparate networks, each one not being monitored, controlled or managed yet everyone connecting to the core infrastructure of our organization. The assumptions or premise for this risk is most people are connected through unsecured networks. What I mean by unsecured networks is the home residential broadband, the Wi-Fi dongles, the mobile hotspots do not carry the same level of security and managed networking capabilities that a service provider has when it's an office leased line or if it's an infrastructure provided to a commercial premises. Further, internet restrictions that prevailed when one operated from office do not anymore exist. This is creating issues, especially for business owners, leaders, board members on data sharing. Organizations are really grappling for answers to see how they can protect confidential information from being leaked out, from being copied into an employee's personal cloud infrastructure, Google Drive, iCloud Drive, etc. Further, Employees are becoming victims of malware attacks, emails which look like genuine in nature and may lead to a financial fraud, data compromise, data breach, maybe an attack on the organization's core infrastructure itself. Non-compliant office policies and non-updated antivirus on user machines. All of this are a matter of concern. There has been dependency on high availability firewalls, secure VPN connections, enhanced surveillance and monitoring tools. Most of the organizations did not plan for an high availability next generation firewall. Although we are using VPNs, we may not be in a position to secure it completely. Enhanced surveillance and monitoring tools are usually investments made by organizations who are in regulated sector or in the financial sector. Otherwise, investments in these areas are usually very low. The need of the hour post COVID lockdown, maybe managements need to invest in high availability firewalls, pre log on client VPNs, enhanced server and network monitoring tools. People on cloud or people enjoying cloud platform as a service found movement to home much easy compared to organizations that have pure on-premise infrastructure. It was challenging and they had difficulty in the transition. With the extended lockdown, it has only become more difficult. SIEM solutions, Enhanced cloud security are some of the further good practices that were needed during this time. The work from home paradox. All organizations, be it employees, be it IT and risk departments, be it leadership are grappling with this box. So nature of the solution is not known to us, but what is known to us is the action or the problem. 
what is known to us is the employees who are facing this and what are the actions that we need to take what is not known is the design and solution to it it and risk are grappling with it and lastly what is ambiguous and being contested are the goals and the values that the organization is striving to balance during this situation this a typical paradox problem what accesses should i provide to my employees if i am an organization who is not invested in the appropriate vpn what is the design or solution that i may look for now how do i balance monitoring and surveillance of employees whereas i am an organization that believes in upholding privacy and protection of my employee information i am an organization that does not want to indulge in a monitoring or surveillance without informing my employees these are dilemmas that leadership are grappling with how long after the lockdown should i allow my employees to come back to office to resume normal operations challenging situation challenging decisions to be made what happens to employees who are using personal assets do i enable restrictions on their machines similar to office or do i trust them to work from home with connections to office via a vpn and rely that they do not misuse the accesses given to them dilemmas or problems of employees space to sit and operate from in the house networking infrastructure managers grappling with problems of managing teams it and risk also looking at advisories coming out on the net in terms of collaborative tools like zoom cisco webex having their own set of challenges and risks lastly leadership trying to balance between customers and vendors to ensure they are not exposed to unnecessary cyber security and data breach challenges so covid 19 is the challenge or the problem statement an organization may need to have a process in place to handle this the key elements of the approach to this process could be to have a structure the right structure to operate in the right people or team members and an intuitive problem solving method some of the key things organization big and small can plan is to establish a critical incident management team and process the objective of this team is to overall see all aspects of the organization working operations technology infrastructure risk etc the team needs to continuously identify and understand evolving and emerging threats reframe issues challenges as questions and look for probable solutions and engage in communication for both inside stakeholders as well as external customers the leadership will have to assemble the right mix of people internal who understand the organization thoroughly external who can guide and give a better opinion in areas where the organization is blinded at the last leg have someone represent from the leadership who manages and balances the goals and values of the organization it's good to engage in an iterative problem solving method where every time there is a problem situation threat understand the situation develop a solution predict outcomes by doing scenario based analysis testing and execute it and it goes without saying ki at step 
you need to establish your priorities, goals, and values, and you need to have a team in place to execute and implement the iterations, the controls, the enumeration of risks, and the probable impacts and the preventive measures to handle them. Some of the broadly understood controls today by organizations and people together are that cloud is a good option to use. There is a misnomer amongst leadership that once I start operating from cloud, I am protected by default. This is not true. Cloud, an unprotected cloud, comes with its own set of probable vulnerabilities and unknown threats. One needs to follow the same discipline and the same level of controls as is necessary in an on-premise environment. It would be good for organizations to enable dual authentication for people who are using cloud resources. Another recommended good practice would be to have encrypted drives both on laptop machines and also on the cloud for areas where you feel you have confidential information that needs to be protected. The need for encrypted drives on laptops and desktops arise due to the basic fact that there has been transport, transfer, chances of the organization assets being damaged or lost or stolen is high. An encrypted hard disk ensures that in case an office asset is stolen or lost, it does not lead to an unintended consequence of information compromise. Lastly, access needs to be relooked into. Access management should be planned to provide access to only relevant people on need to know basis. Further, for confidential information, the access has to have a time and once the work is over, the same needs to be revoked. Similarly, it is advised to have hardware based VPN rather than soft VPN tokens. Pre logon VPN connect is recommended. When I state pre logon VPN, what I mean is that every time an employee logs into the organization, logs into the internet or to the organization core infrastructure via the internet, he is forced to use the VPN. The VPN, if it is not on, prevents an employee to go online. This adds a layer of security for the IT infrastructure team managing the office assets by protecting the employees from the threats and vulnerabilities that exist in the world of internet. Two-factor authentication for people having privileged or elevated accesses, people with administrative accesses, it helps revalidate and create a second layer of security to ensure only the intended user is the one who's actually accessing the infrastructure. During this time, because of the short notice, a lot of organizations move their employee desktops to their home. Desktops come with their own peculiarities and challenges, one of them being wireless. So wireless dongles had to be tacked to the desktop, due to which endpoint protection USB controls had to be disabled. Pre-logon connect usually does not work on desktops very easily. Patch and antivirus update is another area of challenge and concern. Leadership has already realized now that most of our investments in cybersecurity and data security are on protection and detection technologies. We really do not invest in identification, response, and recovery. Whereas, NIST recommends that one needs to invest in all the five pillars to maintain a stable cybersecurity and data protection posture. It is good to invest in protection and detection, 
but it is equally necessary to invest in identification, response, and recovery. All five pillars need to be handled with equal weight. The investments need to be balanced amongst the five. Another big concern for business leaders, for managers, for people who are into handling of confidential information, IP, trade secrets, is the insider threat, the enemy within. With employees operating from home, it is becoming challenging and difficult for people to monitor, manage, control resources and team members from misusing the rights and the freedom provided to them. It may not be intentional at times, but unknown actions and gestures could also lead to data breach and data leakage. It could be in also something which needs to be looked into. A survey pointed out that 87% of top leadership believes their untrained and unaware staff are their biggest risks and they are the conduit for outside attackers. Further, most of the leaders did, were not aware that third-party contractors who handle their core infrastructure are also the biggest points of data breach and leakage. Fairfax, Equifax, Marriott, all these hotels, all these big brand names which became a victim of data breach. The root cause was tracked down to a third party contractor who managed their infrastructure. Further, if you are in the finance industry, you are in the healthcare industry, you are in the telecom industry, you are exposed to attacks by nation states and sophisticated external attackers. One tried and tested low cost measure for insider threats is to have more of employee training and communication. Yes, now is the time to over communicate. Now is the time to train your employees to be aware of the do's and don'ts. To train your employees to have preventive steps that help in their protection. There are a lot of tools and technology available to determine insider threat. Unfortunately, managements are not exposed or aware of the same. Take stock of the changing landscape. For leaders, people in the risk team, legal compliance team, it is important from a cyber protection perspective to be informed, be aware, and become knowledge leaders. Emerging technologies are good, easy to use, and low cost options, but now is not the time to explore and experiment with them. One needs to be mindful that everything comes at a cost. The recent Zoom video conferencing tool, data risk exposures or risk exposures that are being shown in the media is a case in point. What people did not realize is that Zoom has a free video conferencing offering. People who are using this free, free offer of Zoom are the ones who have become vulnerable to the cyber attacks. So some of the good practices that need to be followed when you are using these collaborative tools is one, invite people to a meeting authenticated by a password. Be a gatekeeper to prevent and admit only known users. Enable a feature where you can lock the meeting once all the users necessary have logged in. Avoid sharing your camera or switching on the video if it is not necessary for a meeting. Ensure you enable encrypted meeting feature. And in case you are the meeting host or the administrator, while leaving the meeting, ensure you end the meeting. 
lastly for users who have been logged out or who have been pushed out of the meeting enable the feature that they don't have an option to log back in i think these preventive steps help you to remain protected in spite of using third party collaboration tools further understand the base premise on why these tools were designed so these these tools were designed as an alternative to your in person meeting they were never designed for cyber security and data protection since the intent of the tools was to keep you connected one cannot expect them to be having defenses as is necessary to protect organization assets <clears throat> one needs to be mindful not to indulge or involve any file sharing or data sharing on these collaborative platforms as far as possible follow your normal channels of communication which you have always been using some initiatives for the organization advisory as far as possible avoid remote access services secure workplace connection to a vpn if possible put across or put up endpoint security wifi connectivity try to establish subnetting if feasible to ensure that only relevant people have relevant access to relevant portions of the infrastructure by default close all ports and allow ports only on necessary access requests ideally it is good to use virtual desktop interface or portals for doing the work they are the safest rather than using remote connectivity tools like vpn encourage people to use direct application access like webmail sharepoint etc rather than trying to directly log on to the organizational infrastructure other indigenous initiatives life support mandate it team needs to work extra 12 to 14 hours because the situation has changed and people working from home necessarily do not operate within the office working hours it must also be known that you enhance your password policy encourage employees to change their passwords it would be a good practice to recheck the passwords of your routers your home wifi networks once again network teams are advised to relook at the password of their firewalls routers switches people using wifi at home should be encouraged to enable encryption wpa2 and wpa3 connectivity controls password controls for accessing their wifi devices it's time to look at your restrictions session timeout and auto lockout has to be enabled networking capabilities like bluetooth etc needs to be disabled employees need to be encouraged to use personal firewalls applications clear instructions not to download applications clear instructions not to have unauthorized applications on machines and lastly awareness now is the time that your employees need to be more aware than ever before over communication if needed is the need of the hour and security aware employee is your best defense in these situations reiterate employee should not click on unknown links remember it's very important for them to be mindful about suspicious and unknown links to click upon lastly any email any request for financial approvals needs to be cross verified if need be you call up the sender on a telephone 
and check with him whether the request is genuine or it is not. Approve only if you are doubly sure of the need. I pause for a few seconds for you people to look at these key questions. And internally evaluate whether your organization operates with these in mind when it comes to cybersecurity and data protection. An organization which follows good practices and can be considered as mature, having good cybersecurity and data protection in place are the ones who have answers to these questions. Extremely important to note that you need to be mindful about change and patch management during these times and as far as possible not involved in any change without following the normal process as was prescribed before the lockdown for doing the change or undertaking a patch. Some good practices for employees. Antivirus. Update your antivirus manually daily. It may not be happening automatically. Make it a habit to scan your computer for viruses on a weekly basis. Run a full virus scan. Refrain from access to unknown and unwanted websites. Do not use free and public Wi-Fi hotspots. And lastly, remain alert. Stay vigilant. In case of doubt, better to pause, confirm, reconfirm, and if necessary, again pause, and only when you are sure, act on it. Don't rely on fake news. Don't rely on phishing emails. Beware of phishing emails and remain alert. So to summarize, one needs to beware of fake messages. Don't be a conduit for transferring fake messages. Enhance monitoring of your assets. This is very true for IT teams and risk management teams. Now is the time to also go to manual monitoring if necessary, manual review of logs so that anomalies or changes which are not normal needs to be observed and acted upon. IT teams to regularly communicate for the sake of brevity and over communication is not a problem during this time. An aware employee, an aware organization, an aware leadership is the best protection that we have against our weakest links. Beware of cloud risks. Cloud does not necessarily mean everything is protected. They carry the same value of risks at, as it is in a normal infrastructure. One needs to enable security configurations, features, and protections on the cloud itself. Reread your contractual obligations. It would be good. You may have committed things to your end customers which may not hold true under the situation. Further, your vendors may not be able to provide the same level of protection while supporting your organization as they had done before the lockdown. It's a good time to reread, reiterate, and understand your current situation and scenario. IT teams need to be aware of bring your own device risks and how they are planning to manage the same. And lastly, beware of phishing mails. Beware of mails which look genuine, but are a cause of problem and worry. Beware of mails that force you to act urgently. Beware of genuine looking donation mails or mails suggesting medicines for COVID-19. Always recheck the sender. Always recheck the contents of the mail. You usually have grammatical errors in spam or phishing mails. 
and any mail which asks for financial transactions to be undertaken avoid them so friends with these few suggestions and good practices i come to the end of my presentation i am open to questions and clarifications if any needed so i pause myself now thank you very much krish uh, for those insights we request all our listeners to type their questions in the questions box on the available in the control panel uh, of the webinar platform and we'll put them out to krish to answer them for you thank you so jugal while questions are coming up uh, one common question which i usually are uh, am getting is about remote access services ki when we enable remote access services how do we handle or what kind of requirements or policies are required so some of the good practices i'll speak till your questions come in for remote access services are that you need to have secure remote access strictly controlled with encryption using a vpn have an acceptable and strong encryption and password policy authorized users need to protect their login id and password and if needed dual factor authentication is a good to have practice at the time of connecting to the vpn or to these remote access authorized users should ensure that remote host is not connected to any other network at the same time or no one else is able to connect when he is connected to the company resources using the vpn so he does not share his screen he does not share his machine to any third party support engineer or any third party when he is connecting to the office infrastructure using a vpn use of external resources to conduct company business must be approved in advance by infosec all hosts that are connected to internal networks via remote access technologies must have up to date antivirus software in place personal equipment used to connect to networks must meet the minimum baseline security standards as prescribed by the organization any exception to this necessarily has to be approved by the cso or the business head or the leaders of the organization so i think this is in terms of acceptable use policy for remote access services thank you krish that was actually one of the questions uh, i'll just pick up a couple of more for you we have a question i would say this is with regards to work from home how do we secure devices from uncontrolled internet access is dlp the only option and at the same time should we have secure access across all our resources at the dc sorry this could be technical terms which uh, i'm not aware of so if you can just give some okay so, so let me just uh... uh rephrase the question so there are two questions in this one question is talking about how do we control our distributed office assets which are lying with employees and they are operating from their respective homes second is talking about protection of infrastructure in a data center which is dc so let me take both the questions one by one for assets of employees where you need to enable controls or restrictions endpoint protection is also a good, good alternative to dlp solutions but any of the solutions for them to work effectively the employee necessarily needs to be connected to the organization's core infrastructure so vpn here plays the role of a single point of failure so if the vpn is on and effective continuously when an employee connects to the organization it becomes easier for one to push the dlp or the endpoint protection policies having said that that is question number 1 that i have answered now jugal can you repeat the second question 
Shall we one moment, Krish? So the, the, one of the parts was how do we secure un, uh, uncontrolled internet access and is DLP the only option? And at the same time, we should have secure access across information resources at the DC. Okay. So uh, uncontrolled internet access is not there. So when you have a secure VPN, the VPN connects to your organization firewall. And if it's a pre long on connect VPN, that means every time I try to connect to the internet, by default, my VPN switch is on. What happens is that any information that the user is trying to access or browse ideally passes through the organizational firewall. So the rules defined in the organization firewall prevents these uncontrolled access. So you don't need ideally a DLP for that. For uncontrolled internet access, you need to configure the right kind of VPN to operate in your office assets. And if the VPN is correctly configured, then that also helps prevent, restrict, protect from people accessing the infrastructure at DC. Thank you, Krish. Okay. Thank you, Krish. Uh, Krish, we have one more yeah. question. Uh, it's uh, the person wants to know how can we secure and find the logs of remote tools like any desk or team viewer or Zoom login users? So is there any way to track activity with people working from home right now? Uh, pardon, Jugal, can you just repeat that question? Sure. How do we secure and find the logs of remote tools like any desk or team viewer and Zoom users? So is there a way that we can secure and find the logs of these remote tools being used? With the current work from home situation so official versions or corporate versions of these tools if you subscribe for and paid for then you can definitely get the logs and access to the logs of these tools if you are using freeware versions of these tools then it's very difficult to get the logs so you'll have to pay for and buy a licensed version of these tools to have access to their logs thank you Krish, uh, from the VPN standpoint, one of the use participants wants to know how do we activate two-factor authentication on VPN networks? And they are using AWS VPN endpoint right now. See, what happens is uh, usually hard hardware-based next-generation VPN firewalls have features as a part of their product offering to enable two-factor authentication. For uh, the person in question who has raised this for AWS endpoint, he needs to take, check the features that he has opted for or subscribed for in AWS endpoint protection to see whether he is actually paid for a two-factor authentication VPN. So this is very much a standard fe feature in hardware-based VPNs like Cisco, Juniper, Palo Alto, Fortinet. So these service providers when they are offering their VPN, two-factor authentication is a standard feature that needs to be enabled. Thank you, Krish. Krish, on the same question, uh, just one more point if you can add on. The person wants to know if there are any automated tools to read logs so uh, it can bring to the forefront if there are any suspicious users. Again, uh, it depends on uh, what you are trying to log. So if you're going to do your network logging, there are tools like PRTG, which helps you in logging your network and sending out alerts for bandwidth utilization, non-utilization, event alerts. The firewall rules itself gives you alerts for suspicious activity, and they also act like an IDS and IPS. So this is network part. For the server part, you will again need to use server monitoring tools which are independent of the infrastructure you are using which will give you alerts based on the rules defined but you need to have some level of technical expertise for using these tools otherwise they will cause more damage than provide support thank you krish krish we we actually have a question from anis anis wants to know if you can throw some light on the cost impact of work from home versus work from office as having a strong IT system infrastructure in place 
and what are you hearing in the industry right now so uh, although we were all forced to work from home due to the technology infrastructure that we have been using lot of organizations have started to believe and operate keeping a balance between work from home and work from office we feel this is going to be the new normal where work from home will no more be the taboo that it was considered uh, in the past and like countries in the west this would start becoming a new normal for organizations the efficiency with which the technology has supported this entire movement only reiterates the fact that it was always available only thing we had not got exposed and we did not use it so now because of its active usage the fine balance of operating only from office is going to go away organizations are going to relook at that and they will encourage people to work from home especially in the service industry where in the past people were denied to work because they found traveling to be too long at times to take up a job with this work from home option the best skill sets can be tapped at the same time the organization can benefit by working with these people so it's going to be the new norm and work from home may continue for longer periods than anticipated and it the more and more technologies will start evolving in supporting this kind of operating environment thank you krish uh krish another question uh how okay this is in terms of it security is uh, just give me one moment how do we take care of multiple vendor engagements if you can give any advice and how about using irm for this okay now uh, multiple vendor engagements uh, one is we need to understand uh, are we talking from an organization who is engaging with multiple vendors and wants to do its risk assessment for these vendors or are we talking of vendors engaging with multiple organizations so i am taking the first scenario the organization engages with multiple vendors and it now needs to do its risk assessment so third party risk management has always been there from a very long time but there are various approaches which have changed so the traditional approach was to do an abc analysis and do a risk thorough risk assessment for a category vendors but with data protection laws coming into play irrespective of the size of my vendor even if a small vendor becomes a reason for data breach i still have to face heavy penalties so being mindful of that the approach has taken some change by use of technology so you can do an online vendor assessment so a baseline of all your vendors can be assessed at the same time and then you can follow it up with an on site assessment based on need and the value at risk so by doing an online assessment you are demonstrating due care and covering your third party risk management by keeping all vendors on the same plane so that's a good practice and that is what organizations worldwide are now adopting and working on so hope i have answered that question jibal i hope so too thank you for those remarks krish uh, krish one more question for you uh, what are the preventive measures that an organization can take for ransomware attacks it's a difficult question because there is no single answer for ransomware attacks uh experiences in the past and the cases of ransomware attacks faced by organizations uh there are some different approaches taken by different organizations for some organizations who could not afford to pay for the ransomware what they did was they disconnected the machines that were infected from the core infrastructure they formatted the entire machine and once the formatting was over they restored the previous backup to start business as usual these are organizations whose activities or operations were not hindered by the ransomware attack at the other end of the extreme there were organizations where ransomware stopped the way they were functioning to give an example which is available in public domain Marriott Hotels faced a big ransomware attack, where their software systems 
which were attacked by a ransomware blocked guests who were trying to enter a room the doors got locked automatically so the guests could not enter and the guests who were inside could not come out in spite of their best efforts for 6 hours <clears throat> they were not able to do anything and because this was their core systems they could not switch it off and it was connected to the global interconnected system so they could never switch off the infected machine and try to format or reboot it so they had to pay money for this ransomware and then get themselves free so there is no single solution for a ransomware attack although the preventive steps could be beware of phishing mails do not click on suspicious links scan for viruses malwares if your antivirus is not updated keep it up to date be aware be vigilant these are the preventive steps anything which is available for free always carries a cost in the internet world do remember that yes you will thank you krish interesting last point uh, Krish, that's all the questions that we have for now, uh, but I would want you to kind of wrap it up just by giving some suggestions to all the people in the audience on the steps that they take once we resume office. So any sanitation uh, steps to be taken would, uh, that you can probably, uh, you know, give of advice to uh, people in the room? I would definitely would like to share that. In fact, Government of India is also coming up with an advisory along with NASCOM and other bodies on what steps need to be taken when you resume back work. Some of the broad level steps that have been recommended is social distancing even when you resume back work from May 4th. So in office space also, you need to ensure that there will be a distance of six feet between two people or two workstations. Sanitizers and uh, thermal checks would become a norm for the next three or four months till the COVID scare is completely out. As a good practice, plan your work, work back to office in a manner where desktops can come in the very end. Time the re-entry or resumption of desktops over a staggered period of time beyond 20 days, maximum up to 30 days. For people or machines that are coming back to office, have a system in place to quarantine these machines, check them for analyses if required, check the antivirus, run a full virus scan, do a hygiene on the desktop machines or laptop machines for unauthorized applications or software, check if the operating system needs updates or upgrades. Once all of this is done, allow the user to connect to your core infrastructure. Although, we had to work from home in a hurry. Resumption back to business should be done with caution, with adequate pauses. Do not be in a to start your office. It would be very important to ensure people resume work over a staggered period of time. This is extremely important and necessary. Thank okay. You so much. Thank you so much for those final thoughts, uh, Krish. Anis, over to you for closing remarks. Thank you very much. And, and Krish, on behalf of IBM CCI and all our members, thank you so much for sharing your enlightened views, uh, giving us your time. I think you made a lot of very, very good points today and, and really given us some, some food to think about. I absolutely agree with you that what we are seeing is perhaps going to be the new norm as we move forward. And even if we get back to office, it will not be business as usual as we've grown up you know, over the last several years in our career. So it is very important for all of us to learn and adapt to the new situation, particularly uh, not just our ways of working, our ways of interacting, but also in terms of IT systems, infrastructure. Because as you rightly pointed out, if we are not uh, wary or if we do not take care of some of these fundamental hygiene factors as far as IT is concerned, and system securities are concerned, then the damage may be far more than what we have faced in the past. So thank you once again. On behalf of the Indo-Belgian Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce, I'll also like to uh, thank uh, our knowledge partners next time in SKP for organizing this event. 
and uh, go to webinars as well. Uh, members, I hope you really enjoyed and learned from this uh, introduction we had. As I've mentioned earlier, this is going to be uh, one of several webinars that we will be hosting in the future as part of our new norm. And I do hope that you, uh, you know, get something from it. Thank you once again for joining us, and goodbye. Thank you.